Greetings and konnichiwa, and welcome back to the Onyx Tavern Vlog series on Russia Sentai Tokyujer. I'm your host, Rick the Barkeep, and today let's talk about station number 32, Determination. Now, as we go into this episode, I just want to go ahead and make this point as, as we start. I'm not going to go ahead and review this episode in the normal way that I do. It's because this episode is the, the revelation of what the mystery behind the Tokyujer is. We find here in Station 32 um, why they only have memories uh, as children. We, we find out how they became the Tokyujer. All, all those things are answered in a pretty short and simple revelation, but so much of the episode is dominated by their reaction to the revelation that I'm going to spend actually more time talking about the mystery and the revelation as opposed to what really happens in the episode. Because simply what it is, we find out what the revelation is, they discuss it, they deal with it, then we have an action sequence that dominates the final third of the episode. So there's no point in my mind discussing what happens in those bits, but I think there's more to discuss about the revelation, how it works into this particular episode, and how it fits into what we've seen before. So if you guys were looking for a detailed analysis of, you know, what happens in this particular episode, again, I'm not going to talk too much about that. I really just want to go ahead and talk about this revelation uh, and, and again, how it just reacts to everything. That being said, I also want to go ahead and tell you guys that I don't like this revelation. I think that the answer to the mystery sucks. That's about as plain as I can go ahead and make it to you guys. I, I think it sucks. Um, they obviously went a different direction than, when I, than what I thought they were going to go ahead and do. And it's always great to usurp expectations and go in a different direction, you know, misdirect your audience and so forth. But the problem is that this revelation is very weak, doesn't make a lot of sense, and it honestly could have been a whole lot better. Now, granted, this is only Station 32, we have 47 episodes in total, and we haven't gotten there yet, but let's talk about the episode and, and what happened, you know, what we found out, and how it relates to what's come before, and I'll just kind of tell you guys, again, what, what I think about this whole thing. So, again, the episode picks up where we left off, where the president uh, basically said we're going to disband the Tokyujer, and... The reason they're being disbanding the Tokyujer is because of the nature of their existence. So, when they were children, and their town was being consumed by the darkness, what actually happened was is they were flung out of the town. You know, uh, darkness was coming in, and they were able to basically escape because of the power of their imaginations. The president of the Rainbow Line, a.k.a. the Easter Bunny, because that's what he looks like, decide upon to take it upon himself to take these children and transform them into adults and turn them into the Tokyujer. That is the mystery in of itself. The revelation to the mystery. That they were children and the rainbow line turned them into adults. Why did he turn them into adults actually? Well, it turns out that adults are more resistant to the darkness Yet they need the imaginations of children to, you know, basically fight against the darkness. So the compromise was make them adults, but give them child's imagination. So basically this entire premise of the series is based on the Tom Hanks movie, Big. And yet it doesn't actually, the, the movie Big seems a lot more mature and well thought out than the, than the series is. And I'm not knocking the entire series, the creation staff. I'm just knocking the idea that the entire mystery this time was the fact that they were children the whole time. Now, when the series first started, what I had assumed, based on all the evidence that was presented up to this point, was that they, they were children, they became adults, and then something happened to them obviously having to do with the darkness and maybe Zet, in which they lost all their memories except that of childhood. 
and that the episode and that the series would deal with them trying to regain their memories of their uh, lives after children and that they would change and grow as people because here here was kind of my thought with it is that let's take uh, Kagura for for example we have Kagura as an eight-year-old child she grows up becomes a woman loses her memories and suddenly she's this child's in a woman's body which is why she acts the way she does but slowly and sure, surely over the series, she remembers more memories of her life and she grows out of being that child into what her adult form is. And the consequences of that would be, hey, I, I remember, I don't like you because we used to date or something or I'm jealous of you and, uh, you know, just all these different life things that have happened. I mean, think right now, if you are, say, in your 20s, Go back 10 years of your life and think of the person that you were. Now imagine that you are that person 10 years ago and everything that happened in that decade is completely missing. And But then you start remembering your life. You would slowly become that person you were again. Or in some cases, you might be somebody completely different. I was always hoping that what would happen is that that was what it was and that we would get these different characters. Like we have the character of Takachi who I didn't really like, but when he regained his memories of his life, he became somebody different, somebody better, a character that I liked. But that's not what happened at all. Takachi, Kagura, Mio, all of them are exactly as they were as children. It also explains the time difference within the series. Because when we talk about when they were looking for their hometown, I said, well, if it happened 10 years ago or something, and that was with my theory that they had grown up within that period, well, of course it's not going to be on map because it you know, was destroyed 10 years ago. But the fact of the matter is, yeah, it is. It, it just happened. I mean, it probably happened like an hour before the very first episode. Their town disappeared. So now it casts doubt on that episode because they should know that it was on a map somewhere. But but there's so but there are other contradictions because I, I kind of thought they were giving us clues to the identity of who these people were. So again, if we take what I was assuming uh, into that, let's take a look at Wright. Wright was wearing a shirt that's a uh, WMU, which I assume stood for Western Michigan University. He had a shirt that said Brooklyn. He had a lot of shirts that you know had English written on them. It was my th uh, understanding that he was wearing those because he was American or Japanese who lived in America for a substantial part of time. And then he came back to Japan somehow. So those would be clues leading up to his identity. Like, ah, he's wearing a Brooklyn shirt, so maybe he's from Brooklyn. He's wearing a Western Michigan sweater, so he, maybe he's from uh, Michigan, or that's where he studied. Things that could tell us where he's been and what he's done. But with this revelation, those mean nothing. I don't know if they were giving us those as clues to as red herrings to misdirect us or if that was just his wardrobe because it seems to me that if you're going to make a, a Japanese person wear American uh, language shirts that you have to have a damn good reason for doing that but based on this episode there is no reason for that he just happened to have those shirts let's also talk about what the rainbow line present did because basically what he did is he robbed the childhood from the, these children. That, that's what he, he's done. Now, every hero has to make a hard choice at some point to defeat the enemy. The Rainbow Line president made a hard choice. He needed somebody to fight the, uh, fight the Shadow Line with, with strong imaginations, but he didn't have adults that could do that. Mm -hmm. So he decided to turn these children into adults. Now, the problem with this is, first of all, the Tokyo don't realize that fact that this man rabbit thing has taken their childhood away from them, in, in a sense. That he has put them in these bodies and threw them into a situation which they were not prepared for. You know, one, one of the things that um, the creator of the Power Slash Rangers uh, film said is that he wanted to talk about the whole child soldier thing and how he thought that the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers were drafted into this war as children soldiers, and he wanted to highlight how bad that was. 
I think he's failed spectacularly, and you guys know my thoughts on that. But that whole thought is is really here because the Tokuja are in essence child, uh, child soldiers. That that's exactly what they are, and the Tokuja. While they want to defeat the Shao line, they have no resentment for the president for doing this. I mean, I guess he, the uh, Rainbow Line president could have made Tokuger as children. I mean, how many times have we seen in the past where we do have the children characters become adult rangers? I mean, we saw it in Die Ranger, we saw an O Ranger, and we obviously saw in Power Rangers Turbo. This is not a new concept. So my thought is, why even have them a a as a a adults throughout the series? Why isn't that our five main rangers begin as children, and then when they morph, they become adults? I mean, what about them physically being adults? That if you had to change them, makes them resilient to the darkness. I, I don't get. It. I mean, if we if we took Justin from Turbo and he's a child, obviously with imagination, and then he morphs into the Blue Turbo Ranger, is he still resilient to the darkness? Is he really even in an adult's body? I mean, it seems to me that's the way the series should have gone: is have the five children as five, as opposed to teenagers or adults. I mean, they didn't do that. But but the thing is. The Rainbow Line president did this, and they don't resent him for it. And, and I don't understand why. Maybe because they're trying to understand their situation, but it, it just doesn't seem like they would come to the conclusions that they, they've come to. Let's also talk about how ridiculous this is uh, to begin with. Now, the point I'm going to go ahead and make, let me be clear on this. I'm not saying this to be tantalizing or salacious or drive up view counts because I'm talking about sex or anything. Because this is a, a major thing that I don't think anybody really thought through. And it has to do with sex. All right. Here, here, here's my point. Let's look at Mio and Kagura. They're both the women of the team, right? Well, they started off as children, and then they suddenly became adults within a very quick amount of time. Even if we assume that they don't have all their memories of children, they still have a child's perspective. So as women, now that they've been thrust into a, a adult female's body, how exactly do they come to terms with all the changes that their body has gone through and the things that their body is continuing to go ahead and do, like, oh, I don't know, monthly menstruation? I mean, think about it for a second. If you take an 8-year-old girl and put her into the body of an 18-year-old girl, that's going to be very complicated psychologically on any, any girl, don't you think? But in this series, it's never addressed upon that they're not at home or they're not comfortable in their own bodies. Things like sexual urges and desires and being attracted to the other characters, that doesn't really pull up here. I mean, yes, we had an episode where Mio was attracted to, you know, Ken from Geeky Ranger, but it's not even like she approaches it as an adult or even approaches it as a child. I mean, the approach that I always felt that, that she had was a person who doesn't have the adult wherewithal to understand the situation and thus responds like a child. Not literally, that's how a child would go ahead and respond. But where I'm getting with this whole point about how their bodies change is that you can't take a eight-year-old girl put in an 18-year-old's body and expect everything to be hunky-dory, which is exactly what's been happening here. There's going to be some sort of psychological, mental, emotional distress that these characters go into because they don't know how to handle an adult body. Granted, it is easier for the men, but for the women, I mean, I'm not saying there should be an episode where Kagura goes through puberty and we have to deal with that situation. No, that, that is not what I'm trying to go ahead and say. What I'm trying to say is they did not think about that as being a hurdle for their story making it believable. Unless the Rainbow Line president put it into their minds that they know how to be an adult, which also makes less sense, then it doesn't make sense that this is, this is something that should be happening. The whole idea of them being children turned into adults, 
I think is a very weak revelation and it makes very little sense. I really think that what it should have been is that they were children, then they were adults, then they lost their memories and could only remember as children. And that eventually they were going to learn about things of themselves. Because one of the things that, that I've complained about about this series is a lack of character development. Kagura has not grown any as a character. Maybe she's getting a little bit of confidence. Mio's become static. Hikari's become static. Takachi has grown a little bit. And Wright has grown just a little bit. But honestly, if we went back to Station 1 and compared them to our characters here in Station 32, what about them has exactly changed? Nothing. Nothing has changed with these characters, and, and that's part of the problem. But even the fact that they were children, they, they, they say that they're growing in the episode. They're becoming more, more than they were. And, of course, part of the problem that they have to be disbanded is essentially the fact that, hey... You know, if you continue to do this, could become Tokyo, you're going to be stuck as adults. You can't go back to being children ever again, which is a genuine moral dilemma. You know, are we going to be adults or go back to children? But they choose uh, to go ahead and fight. I kind of lost my point there. I'm, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just... It, this is a, one of those situations where I'm really emotional about it because it's just so stupid the, the way they decided to go with it. I mean, I, I want to know why they decided to do this. Why make them children in adult bodies? Why, why is there no passage of time? Why is it? I mean, because right now, there is nothing for them to learn after this, sta after this episode. After Station 32, it's going to be getting back to their home, getting the drill, Rasha back, liberating the Shadow Towns. Yes, but they're not discovering new things about themselves. That was the point I was trying to get. They're not discovering anything about themselves. I mean, because again, if we take, say, Hikari, what if he had a girlfriend that broke his heart and all that? And then we have an episode where he's maybe dating a new girl, becoming interested, but has these memories of heartbreak and despair. And he doesn't want to remember because they are so sad. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. These dark, mysterious things. Because I was hoping by series end, there would be like this great reason, you know, why all this has happened. Why they were touched by the darkness and all that. But this is just weak. I mean, this is like taking the easy way out. The only other thing that seems interesting and might lead to something down the line is at the end, all the Tokuja are singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star with different lyrics, but then again, I guess that's how Japanese do it. While at the same time, thanks to cross-editing, um, Zet is singing the same song. What connection does that have? Maybe there is something of a mystery there, but I, I almost kind of doubt it. Something connected to Zet and the Tokuger, they have some sort of common event in their past. What that common event is, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm hoping the payoff is much more satisfying than this. And the thing is, this payoff is not satisfying in, in, the, in the slightest. I'm very disappointed that this is what they decided to go ahead and do. I, I really think they could have done much better, uh, given us more interesting things with these characters, but for whatever reason, they chose not to. So that's all I really have uh, to go ahead and say. Maybe as we go along, there are other things I can say, but again, with the build-up and, and what we've had, I've just been very disappointed, not really happy about it. Um, I, I just hope it can get better from here. So those are my thoughts. Uh, what do you guys think? Was it a satisfying con uh, conclusion to the mystery? Uh, were you disappointed like I was? I mean, what do you guys think? I'd really like to know. Otherwise, next time, join me for Station 33. Maybe we can, again, get better from this point. But until then, I want to thank you for listening. Have a good evening. And the tavern is now closed. <laughs>